Do we have an unhelpful advice, Gil Gil? Ghost stories with Bobby and Kalila. After last week, so many people wanted you guys to answer their paranormal experiences because you guys are experts. A long time listener thought I'd share my ghost story with you. I'm a 30-year-old dude who does not believe in any of that woo-woo bullshit. However, my young nephew keeps mentioning that we believe uh, what we believe is just an imaginary friend. But he refers to him as the man with the snake neck. He's mentioned him a couple times and usually at night. If you press him for more information, he'll eventually just respond that he doesn't know where he came from, but that he lives in the basement and comes through a hole in the floor. He's referring to the air conditioning vent in the hardwood floor of my sister's house. Generally, I'd say this is just some twisted imagination of a young child under six, but the last time I babysat him at around 2 a.m. after the nephew was sleeping, I swear to you I could hear steady knocking coming from the basement steps. They eventually stopped on their own after I refused to investigate by myself. The next morning, my freaky nephew asked if I saw the man with the snake neck last night when he came to visit. Needless to say, I immediately pan, uh, planned on cutting that kid out of my life ASAP. Yes. But do you think yes, I'm just cut over, him out? Do you think I'm overreacting, or do kids actually see things that we cannot? Also, what the fuck does snake neck mean? Love you guys. That's, love the show. Okay. That's like the no neck lady in the in the Haunting Ooh. of Hill House. I'll tell oh, no, you, I'm sorry. The bent neck lady. I'll tell bent, you oh, why neck, yeah. my opinion, my expert opinion in these por- paranormal activities, you know what I mean, is, is that when a child sees an imaginary friend, mm-hmm. but I don't think it's an imaginary th- I think I think it's a when they see um, the boogeyman mm. or, they're, or they're fearful of the creature down below, right? Mm-hmm. It's usually um, there's something down there, or I saw a shadow, or, or I, I feel something, or, or you know. But when you when you get specific, mm-hmm. and you see the neck, and you see reptile scales, right? Snake neck, and that's also a very like descriptive. It, 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 it's not you know, descriptive. It's odd. It's an odd thing to describe. What would Why you do? If that was my son, I would move, and he would have to stay there in the house. <laughs> Fuck. Or no, you know what I would do? I would be like, um, I would boarding school. Okay. Oh yeah, remove yeah, 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 him yeah, yeah. from remove, the source. No, I'd remove him from me. Oh, but like, oh. but, but pretend for social for social reasons. No, you know he's in Switzerland going to you know what I mean the academy. Mm. Like really? He, does he come home for summer? No, it's 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 a year round thing. But what if what if? the young kid is the snake charmer. And so he's the only one that can control the snake and maybe I keep see. it keep it a friendly snake neck monster. Whether like whether he's he could control it or whether it's a fucking monster, I don't want that shit in my life. Why? It could be an ally. Oh that's true. Like not all not all ghost cat I mean Casper exists. Oh so like the, we oh so there's an intruder. Mm-hmm. Right. You, you hear the fucking glass, you know what I mean? And people coming in, you go to your son, snake time, it's snake time. Yep. Right? And so, the, so the kid goes, oh, no, no. the kid goes, oh, no, no, no. lights a couple times, oh, no, no, no. Bing, 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 bing. and all of a sudden, and it comes out, oh, that's it's a weapon. Fucking thing, yeah. It's like um, amazing. Let the right one in. Remember how eventually yes. she protected the boy from like being bullied and stuff. Mm-hmm. Mm. I wanted to read this um, thing. Remember how last week um, during our paranormal um, session of talking about the pink flowers around the pale yellow house, yeah. somebody sent me what they found on the internet about what those pink flowers that Cadena de Amor symbolize. Do you want to hear it? Symbolize. Remember that yellow house? Yeah, where everything of course. Went I, can't, bad? I can't forget it. Oh, okay. Okay, it says Cadena de Amor. <laughs> Cadena de Amor are a flower from Mexico and are widespread throughout the Philippines. On the surface, they are vines of beautiful pink and white flowers, and that is why they are named Chain of Love and sometimes Bride's Tears, as a flower resembles tiny hearts and chains. However, um, they earn a unlucky or negative connotation since they flourish so strongly that they overwhelm and choke out their surroundings. They are often commonly found in graveyards, constantly needing to be eradicated as they eventually cover and consume entire headstones in graveyards. Oh my fucking God. So they choke out their surroundings. And my whole house was surrounded by that. Mm. Wow. Wow. And you need to eradicate them. Cut yeah. them from your memories. Mm-hmm. Uh, the honest truth about the kid with the snake neck monster. Yeah. The honest truth is it's probably he, he might have gone through something traumatic Right, and he made 
you know, and and this snake neck um, creature, you know, what I mean, is something that he came up with to deal with, you know, what I mean, this tragedy, or mm -hmm. he could just have a very creative imagination. And you know, I bet you money if you talk to Stephen King or um, was it Clive Barker or, or any like you know horror movie. What? No, I just the Clive Barker reference just made me giggle. I don't know why. Yeah, Clive Barker and you know any horror movie you know um, novelist. R. L. Stein. They, yeah, they might have mm. you know grown up and had these kind of imaginary th things, and maybe that's just a part of their. Maybe he's going to become a great writer, because that is a very creative, yeah. you know kind of creature a snake n n net dude yeah. and you know honestly little boys are funny man my friend just sent me a video of her son like clamping his own dick with magnets <laughs> and he i that's t she was like do you think there's something wrong with him and i honestly think he's like ahead of his time and just on to something that we're not aware of but he he's like oh, these he's things have electricity and he's like clamping he's his, growing it i don't know what it was but it was he's something I'm I'm proud of him. I'm like, wow, that's he's taking risks in life and wow, what a what a great he's, kid. He's taking risks in life. Like who just clamps their own fucking dick down? Okay, okay. Cause if I saw that If your own son did that? Well, first of all, I'd have to catch him. <laughs> right, there's a there's, there's two things. What scenarios. if he's not secret about it? What there's, if he just okay, does there's it? two right, there's two scenarios. There's me opening up a door. And him clamping his own dick with shit. Oh, right? Dad? Yeah, he, right, right. So that's not as bad as, hey, Dad, you want to see something cool? Yeah. Because then that, I'd be like, yeah, son, I think maybe it's a, a little playful joke. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like somebody, like somebody told me this joke. It was so dumb. On, on, you know, that trauma Todd who, you know, he makes jokes when we play Warzone. Mm -hmm. and, he, and he did a joke that was so dumb. You know, um, what does it sound like when Pink Panther steps on an ant? What? Dead ant, dead ant, dead ant, dead ant, dead ant, dead ant, dead ant. I feel so like that's a Roger joke. Yes, yeah, right. That's a Roger joke. <laughs> right, that's what he said. And then when we were playing, right, for like a minute after he said the punchline, no one said anything. It was completely silenced. No one laughed. <laughs> George and we just and we just kept we just kept playing, and then and then Trauma Todd goes, "You guys didn't think that was funny?" Oh, <laughs> and we never even we never even you know, and deep down I got angry. Yeah, I go did that did that fuck you, you know what I mean? But anyway, wait. So if your son came up to you and said, "Dad, I want you," to I would think that he would do a dead end too. joke, right? Oh, okay. You're, I would think that he would like to show me some sort of like card trick oh. he learned from his friend Billy. Yeah. No, but he's four. Right, he's four. If he was clamping his dick, you know, it's like, you know, the human version of Julio, our dog. And I would probably seek medical, like psychological attention to it. Mm. That's weird. I don't know. Mm. I found it to be really cute and adventurous. <laughs> <laughs> uh, truly, that's what I thought. I was like, I love this kid. This kid is just... Getting to know his body and like doing weird shit with it and not having any shame. Yeah. Thanks for listening to another episode of Tiger Belly. We really, you know, this has been a tough week. Um, you know, we'll see what happens. More will be, more will be revealed. Yeah. More will be revealed.